Hello everyone, this is Bob Brown, Risk Community Coronavirus Update number 58. We'll talk about the uh, a couple things, keeping Nebraska deaths below 2,000 hopefully, the new more infectious COVID strain and what that means, and some vaccine frequently asked questions. So. So I think hopefully the goal for all of us in Nebraska should be keeping Nebraska fatalities below 2,000. And I think we can very readily do that uh, because we know exactly how to do that. We know that uh, basically we can do it with two things. We can use basic control measures like wearing a mask around anyone who doesn't live in our house, uh, avoiding crowded and confined spaces and keeping your distance ideally at least six feet. Uh, that will bring the coronavirus uh, spread down dramatically and the rest can get taken care of by vaccination. So get vaccinated when your number is called. If we do this, this would really work and we could be back to normal by May or even June. June or even May. Um, how do we know it works? Uh, well, it's already worked for influenza, actually. So uh, there's some of the conspiracy theorists out there saying, oh, it's all being misdiagnosed because we're not looking for influenza. And actually, yes, we are actively looking for influenza. This is a Midwest region report from BioFire, an urgent care doctor I know uses this device, but they pool all their data for the entire Midwest region. And you'll look and see that there, yeah, there's a lot of coronavirus around, but there's almost no influenza. A very rare cases the last three months and zero for the last week for influenza B and the two more common strains of influenza A. And so the combination of of wearing a mask, which also stops influenza, by the way, and vaccinating, because we did vaccinate a lot of people for influenza this past few months, has basically pushed the influenza uh, uh, outbreak to pretty much zero. This should be in the high, it should be in the upswing right now, and this is when influenza usually is uh, filling up the hospitals. It's literally almost zero because the combination of masks uh, and uh, vaccination. So it'll work for coronavirus too. Coronavirus is more infectious, so we have to do it better, but we can stop coronavirus the same way. Um, how are we doing? Well, as a state, uh, it's pretty much the same measures across the state, unfortunately. So we almost overwhelmed our hospitals a few months back. Thankfully, we got some things under control. People then, unfortunately, relaxed a little bit and did the wrong thing over Thanksgiving, got an uptick, made a huge reduction. But unfortunately, it looks like our numbers may be going up again because, again, people got together over Christmas and New Year's in, the ho in multi-household group gatherings without a mask. Uh, there could be a little spread happening uh, because of youth sports. Uh, but basically, and I think some, to some extent, we relaxed some of the health uh, directed health measures prematurely. We needed to get it down into this range before we started relaxing and when unfortunately we've taken our feet off the brake too soon. Uh, another way to look at this, uh, who, who is the best, like I keep saying at, at the end of the, uh, the day uh, for public health and health care, it's dead, not dead. Uh, whoever has the less dead people, they're the people who got it right. People had the most death of dead, dead people, they're the ones who got it wrong. So one way to look at it is uh, over time. So here's a graph of Lancaster County's mortality per 100,000. So four regions of Nebraska, Lincoln and Lancaster County. Why did we do best in Lincoln and Lancaster? Well, because of a quirk in state law, we can set our own direct, direct health measures and we don't have to do what the state makes us do. Uh, and so we put our mask ordinance in early. We have more restrictive measures than other areas. Uh, and we did this, though, I would also comment that not only did we put Although we put some more restrictive measures, we did get most of our kids in school, and we still have a 3% unemployment rate. So we were able to keep our economy going, or most of our kids in school, and still have the lowest mortality rate in the state. Next lowest was Douglas and Sarpy County. With anything, you'd expect them to be higher because it's harder to control a pandemic in a metro area. Well, they figured out that even though the, the state wouldn't let them put their own directive health measures in, the, the cities or municipalities within those counties could create the under mask ordinances, which they did. And I think that helped limit their mortality rate to the lower than the rest of the state. Now, Adams Buffalo Hall, which is uh, Hastings, Grand Island, Kearney, their numbers are higher, but one, because Grand Island got hit with that massive JBS outbreak. Uh, then they got it almost completely under control, but then theirs took a get off just like everybody else. Uh, but they wouldn't have been worse than the rest of the state if they hadn't had that massive JBS outbreak. So that's not, you know, they, were, they got hit first. The rest of the state was not able to put its own directive health measures in place. And that, so you see these higher mortality rates in places who weren't able to put in things like mask ordinances. And so at the end of the day, uh, who got it right is whoever that was the less dead people and maintain their economy and kept their kids in school, and that would be Lincoln and Lancaster County. Uh, state's kind of a mixed bag right now. One of my frustrations continues to be Test Nebraska's communications. So I answered my survey yesterday and I get the, the, the email, uh, the, the web response actually still has inaccurate information as to what her community is and, and overly minimizes things. Uh, and it didn't eat, literally the website says zero about a mask. Now they actually, when I complete the survey, it did send me an email at least does mention the mask, but it's buried in the middle of this. So the most important thing we should be telling to people who wear a mask is barely even mentioned in Test Nebraska, and they still literally have the wrong numbers. So I called them and complained. So if you get that mail, email, please call and complain as well, and hopefully they'll get this changed. Now, on a positive note, uh, the state is doing a little bit better job with the vaccine rollout. And so you can go to the CDC website, which I've linked to in the notes section, and you can follow to see how we're doing compared to the rest of the country. We're not the best, but we are above average at least. So at least we've got that going. And so I like this degree of transparency. 
Uh, another positive development is uh, Nebraska Department of Health and Human Services is actually going to track that and put that on their uh, website as well. On February 1st, they're even going to have rates by public health district so we can hopefully develop some positive competition to get everybody vaccinated. So this is a very good development that the state's being more transparent like this about the vaccination rollout, which I think is a good thing. Uh, and it's important because, you know, what gets measured gets managed, what gets managed gets done. And to be accountable, we need to have those numbers out there that everybody can see and make sure that things are going the right way. Learn from who's doing best, you know, because we need to do a lot better. Nebraska has some of the worst urban rural health disparities in the country. And so here's a similar map based on influenza vaccination rates. We need to not uh, repeat history here. We need to do a better job with coronavirus than we've done with uh, influenza across the state. So having those numbers out there and transparent, I think, is a great development. Um, now, what about this next uh, more contagious strain? Unfortunately, it's already in at least four states in the United States, probably more. Uh, we are actively looking for it in Nebraska. So Nebraska Public Health Lab does test for it, as does Physicians Lab. So uh, when it hits late Nebraska, hopefully one of those labs will tell us. So far, it does not appear to be here. However, this is very concerning. So is the new strain a problem? Well, the severity, yes and no. I mean, the severity of illness looks similar. So if you get it, you're not more likely to die. And it is likely that the current vaccines will work just like it will. So the, so the strain hasn't mutated enough that most people think that the vaccine will still be effective. Unfortunately, because of the larger number of infections, we'd have, we could have more deaths, not because the severity is, is worse, just because more people could potentially get infected. It also potentially creates a higher bar for herd immunity, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, the next question, though, from my, in my mind is why is it more infectious? Is it because it reproduces faster? Is it because it requires a lower dose of exposure? Or could it be due to merit more aerosol spread? Uh, to me, this is my biggest worry. If there's more aerosol spread, it means that some of the things we've got in place in schools may not work as well. And so it's important that we screen for this. I hope Nebraska is looking for it as well, but at least Nebraska Public Health Lab and Physician Lab are looking for it and let us know. Uh, then some vaccine frequently asked questions. So lots and lots of questions about this. So I'll go through uh, some of the most common ones I've been hearing here the last few days. So first question is, do I still need to wear a mask? The answer is yes. Uh, there's a couple of reasons why you still need to wear a mask, even if you've been vaccinated. Uh, one is we know the vaccine prevents symptomatic and severe infections, but we don't know yet if it prevents asymptomatic spread. So you could have an asymptomatic infection that spreads to others despite being vaccinated. <laughs> it is 90, also it's 95% effective, which is great, but it's not 100%. So one out of 20 times, it's still not going to work. So that's one reason you need to wear a mask. The other reason it'll still take four to six weeks to be fully effective. So once first dose and then the second dose, it's going to be probably six weeks to be to, to have full protection. Uh, the other reason though, out in the community, you're going to have to continue wearing masks is there's no practical way to enforce mask wearing in public spaces based on vaccination or immunity, immunity staff. So we can't put, you know, red you know, letter V's on everybody to say who's been vaccinated or not. That's just not practical. So we're going to have to wear masks until uh, infections drop nearly to zero out in public spaces. Is the vaccine safe? Yes. It's already been given to more than 10 million people. And so, so far, no major reactions other than a handful of allergic reactions that require treatment. Uh, to, to my knowledge, not a single person has died from one of these. It's been uh, tread, readily treated with an EpiPen or Benadryl or something like that. So yes, there are a few allergic reactions, but that's out of you know literally 10 million doses plus right now uh, compared to the 2,000, 3,000 people dying every day of coronavirus. So there's not even a comparison there. There's some common side effects like uh, in the first couple of days, like a fever, headache, or tiredness in some, but that's temporary, goes away. That's not a big deal. Um, there also is post-vaccine monitoring, so you can actually log on to an app, and my wife did that after she got her vaccine. But this is how we track the safetyness of vaccines after they're released, and so I would encourage you to get on this app and look. Uh, this will basically have a way to track systems, find out if there's any unusual side effects that we haven't really seen yet. Uh, the only contradiction indication right now is that allergic reaction. They think it might have something to do with a polyethylene glycol that's used in the production. Uh, polyethylene glycol is not that bad of a chemical. It's actually already used in osmotic laxatives like the bowel prep you get before a colonoscopy, which I've taken before. Uh, so it's not that bad of a chemical, in it, but it could cause some cross-reactivity, and that might be the source of the allergic reactions. Uh, and it's important to discuss, dis, you know, look at the difference between those allergic reactions, there's fainting and there's side effects. Fainting happens, well, anybody seeing blood or shot can faint, for example, not, not a big deal, and yes, that's happened. But most of the time, it's just mild side effects. Like I say, they're temporary, they go away, way better than being dead or in the hospital or having long COVID and heart disease for, for weeks and months and the rest of your life, potentially with coronavirus. 
uh, will enough people get vaccinated? Uh, most surveys are showing 40 to 50 percent will definitely get vaccinated, and then there's another 20 to 25 percent who might be called vaccine hesitant. Uh, these people will likely get the vaccine, they just don't want to go first. So once the rest of us have gone first, they'll probably come along. Uh, and that means we'll probably easily get 60 to 75 percent of people vaccinated uh, this way. Also keep in mind there's probably 20 to 30 percent of people who have at least been, who've been infected already, so we'll, uh, we'll have some immunity. So that'll get us to herd immunity pretty quickly. And also, you know, even if this uh, the new strain is more infectious, some people say 50% more infectious, still herd immunity is in that 80-ish percent range. Well, we can lower the effectiveness uh, of, of, and lower the rate to get to herd immunity and start seeing effects at a lower rate. If we're wearing masks, the, this, the infectiousness of the virus drops because we're, because we're wearing masks. We can change that number. And so we could start seeing here to immunity effects when it got as low as 35, 45% of people uh, vaccinated. And then numbers would start dropping like a rock, which would be great. And that's why we could probably get back, get back to normal this summer, maybe even by May, if we did a great job of slowing spread right now. Uh, so if you want to read more about these challenges, I've again linked to this article. It's a good thing if you want to look at the math behind what, what is herd humidity. Um, you know, in Lincoln, locally, we found that, that thankfully 85% of our teachers that say they want to get vaccinated, which is a good thing. Uh, obviously, you would hope teachers are a more educated population to be more uh, likely to get a vaccine. Uh, and, I, and we know that when we do organized vaccination uh, project, we can easily get 80 plus percent vaccinated because Nebraska's physician networks every year get 80 plus percent of people vaccinated for influenza. Uh, my frustration is the state has still not involved any of us in the vaccine rollout planning. So the vaccine rollout planning is a little disorganized right now. So stay tuned on how it's actually going to happen because literally we don't know either. Uh, hopefully they'll call us and talk to us soon. Uh, and then the other thing we have is we actually may even have a third vaccine, like I've talked about, this Janssen vaccine, uh, Johnson & Johnson as a partnership with. Uh, they could have this, they could have phase three uh, data by the end of late Jan January and, and even have an emergency use by February. This would be great because it's potentially one shot and it doesn't need to be frozen. So all, also good things on the horizon. Uh, another question, hard questions. Some people ask really hard questions that really shouldn't be asked for, for social media. So your social media, Facebook, hive mind questions, those are good for simple and less important things like what's the best Mexican restaurant in town. You should not be asking on social media, if I'm pregnant, should I get a vaccine? That's a complicated question that requires a, uh, a conversation with an expert like your physician. So don't turn to Corona, to, to even me for things like a hard question like that. Uh, now, if you want to stick with Facebook, I like this, uh, your local epidemiologist Facebook page. I think she does a great job, and that's where I got that summary of the vaccines from. So she puts out really good stuff. Uh, another question is, can, the, can, can you be required the, to get a vaccine? The answer is yes, actually. And that was decided in a Supreme Court case in 1905 with smallpox. The, the government could make you get a vaccine. I don't think they will because I don't think it's going to be necessary. Another question, though, is can your employer make, make you get a vaccine? And again, the answer is yes. Uh, now, I, again, I don't think that your employers will require it quite yet unless we can't get to herd humanity. I think we'll get to herd humanity without it being required, but they actually could require you to get vaccinated, uh, just like they already do for other things. So if you work in healthcare field, you can be required to get hepatitis B and or influenza vaccination, and many healthcare facilities do require that. Some give you another option, which I think will be the more common likelihood, is that some, uh, so for example, some health systems will say you have to get a flu shot. If you choose not to get a flu shot, okay, but you're going to have to wear a mask the entire flu season. And usually what we find out is that people get tired of wearing the masks and so they get their flu shot. Uh, so right now everybody's got to wear a mask and at some point we could say, well, we could say you could stop wearing the mask, but only if you've got the vaccine once we've proven that it prevents spread. So maybe that will be the way to incentivize those, uh, those vaccine hesitant to go ahead and get their, vir their vaccine. Uh, when can you get your vaccine? The answer is we don't know yet. Uh, the governor did say yesterday that they're going to move on to tier uh Tier 1B. Tier 1A was healthcare providers and uh, nursing homes, uh, for example. Those have already mostly, for the most part, received their vac the first vaccine. So we're going to be moving on to age 75 plus and Tier 2 people as Tier 1. And then Tier 2 will be people like teachers, for example, and first responders, you know, police, EMTs, people like that. Um, so in the next few weeks, hopefully this will be happening. Again, we don't have much detail because this the state has not really given us any detail yet. So stay tuned on that one when you'll get your vaccine. Uh, so summary again, hey, let's keep Nebraska deaths below 2,000. We are in reach of easily doing that. Uh, the measures are really basic, uh, basic things like wear a mask around people you don't know uh, who are outside of your household, uh, don't have people over. So I've heard already stories of people, they had people over for either Christmas or, or, or New Year's, two, three families, they didn't wear a mask, and now they're already sick. So don't do that. Uh, avoid crowded, confined spaces, keep your distance, and get vaccinated when your number is up. 
So hopefully this is helpful to you. Again, the links are on the bottom. Uh, again, this is what I do for a living, but the disclaimer that these are my opinions, not necessarily of everybody else uh, here, and uh, hopefully this helps.